So let me, uh, I just want to feel the stage. So who here played Neopets when you're younger? Cool. I guess that's almost everyone. Who still, <laughs> who still plays Neopet? Okay, that's, that's surprising. That's a good 10% of the crowd. That's good. So I'd like to talk a little bit more about what we're doing with Neopets, the, the challenges that we're facing, and kind of like uh, some tips and pointers for kind of like uh, people in the gaming industry. Uh, and, but we have a very unique asset, to be honest, but I'll try to go through it as much as I can. So just a little bit about Neopets history. So Neopets is a 25-year-old game, uh, as m most of you played when you were a kid. Uh, during kind of like the peak is actually when 1999 was first uh, founded. The first 10 years, Neopets took the world by storm. It's probably our first game to the world of the internet. Same for me. I played Neopets when I was a kid. Uh, it's a main platform for me to reconnect with all my childhood friends in Canada when I first moved back to Hong Kong. But what happened afterwards is multiple ownership changes. And then uh, in 2005, it's like the first acquisition of Neopets. And then that kind of started the beginning of the downfall. Uh, I wouldn't talk too much about what happened. So there are a lot of things like we didn't catch up with uh, the technology innovation. We lost out on the mobile trend. And then once uh, Neopets was probably one of the most popular games in the early days of the internet, kind of became to decay. And then at 2014, it overgone, like went over uh, another acquisition and ownership change. And then in 2014, 2023, we kind of call it as like the lost decade of Neopets. Uh, and then a management buyout took, uh, took place in 2023. And then uh, part of a spinoff, we're now operating Neopets as an independent company. So I'm really leading the charge to really revive this IP and trying to bring the, bring the joy back. But for us to go through this journey, we need to understand our history. So what made Neopets so successful at the very beginning and what led to its downfall? So before I jump into that, uh, I'll give you an introduction about myself. Uh, so I'm Dominic uh, and I'm currently leading the charge on reviving uh, the Neopets IP. Uh, and a little bit about my background, I played Neopets kind of like when I was uh, when I left Canada and went back to Hong Kong, and then my childhood friends, one summer when I go back, they're all playing this game called Neopets. And then that definitely caught my attention. And I started playing when I was like slightly older, uh, when I was like 12 years old. And then I'm actually, I played Neopets a lot, uh, f a few years before all my friends did in Hong Kong. So that made me a cool kid in Hong Kong because like, oh, I know about this game way earlier before you all did. And then, uh, so that's why it's a big part of my childhood. Uh, but to be honest, I moved on after a few years, uh, and then I studied in the States, and then kind of like forgot about Neopets. So my background is actually less about the gaming industry. Uh, as a professional uh, consultant and uh, private equity investor, I kind of bring very different perspective in how I think about reviving such a legendary IP. Uh, and then a few years ago, I joined this gaming company called NetDragon, and NetDragon actually acquired Neopets in 2004, uh, 2017, and they didn't do much to it and contributed it to the lost decade. Uh, and then that's where I feel like there's an opportunity for us to do, do much more to revive this IP. And that's kind of how uh, I started this journey. So reviving the, such a classic IP, we actually have a three pillar strategy. So first of all, on your left is how we can reimagine the Neopets classic game. Uh, so as the floor stated, it's all about us who played Neopets when we were a kid. And then most of, our, like, most of us are now millennials now. Why would we want to play a 25 year old game? So it's interesting to see that because it's such a big part of our, most of our childhood, there's still a lot that we can offer as a classic game. And because of the lack of innovation, we always joke around, we actually kept the purity of early internet gaming days. So when we play Neopets, it's not really about like how to make money. It's not about like, oh, how we can have like loot boxes so that you can spend more money. And then it's not, not about the clickbait. It's not about, not about that. It's all about creativity, uh, really being at the frontier of the gaming industry revolution back then. But of course, 20 years has passed and nothing has changed with Neopets, but we've all grown up now. So how can we uh, get our lapse users to come back and based on nostalgia, say hi to their pets, and, and things like that. And the second pillar that I want to talk about is actually because Neopets is such a well-known IP, uh, we have like huge brand awareness, and how can we actually build a character IP business out of this? 
and the challenges that we're facing. And last of all is really to the potential to build Neopets into a transgenerational IP and not, being, not just being able to attract our lab users to come back, but what can we make use of this platform and this IP to really go and capture new generation of players in, in the future. And hopefully there are many, many more 25 years to come. So for reimagining the Neopets classic, I think the first tip for us to really know who's still playing Neopets? Who's our audience? So, I mean, most of us play Neopets as a kid. We are a kid, very kids-friendly IP from the very get-go. But can we still remain as that if we want to attract our users to come back, especially our LAPS users? So at our peak, we have uh, more than 35 million uh, monthly active users. But now we probably have less than 1% of that that is still playing Neopets. But for this core user base who are still playing Neopets, they've played more than 10, 15, 20 years, and they're still playing this classic game. And the first step for us is really to understand our audience, knowing where they're based. So as you can see that North America contribute like 70% of our business, and majority of our users are millennials. So we should really need to rethink about what we can offer in the classic game and not just focus on being a kid's IP. But of course, the kid's IP will contribute to other segments of our businesses, which I'll talk about later. But really with classic game, one thing we need to understand is who we should attract and who we want to focus on. So one, de one of the decisions we made is to really relax a little bit about uh, kind of like the restrictions we have since the early days of the internet. For example, like how strict uh, we have controlled the forums, what you can talk about, how we can open up the IP so that our community members can talk more about it. And then some of the good results that we have been able to drive is that in the past year, uh, the the classic game revival has been really focused on bringing our LAPS users to come back. And then so our active player base has grown by almost uh, 100%. Uh, and then now it's standing at 300K uh, monthly active users. But if you think about it, that's still only 1% of our historical peak in the early 2000s. And what, what have we done? So first of all, uh, Neopets.com uh, for the past 20 years is full of bugs, is broken down. So one thing we did is we leveraged uh, emulators to make that uh, a lot of our mini games that are built on Flash becomes playable again. Uh, and that's one of the first thing we did. And that really helped keeping kind of like the growth in Q3 of last year is, uh, is actually kind of like uh, making these mini games playable again. So historically, we have over 300 mini games. By the time I took over, there are only like 15 games that were playable uh, among the mini games. And then with the emulator, Ruffles, uh, we're able to have over 150 games up and running now. So that really helped to contribute to the daily engagement and attracting some of the lapse users to come back and engage with the game. And the second of all, what we've done is actually we launched our new plot it's our first new plot in over a decade. So during the last decade in the past, uh, we didn't do anything exciting inside the game. Uh, but in the past year, we're able to launch a new plot. And that really helps to build the story of uh, what Neopets is about, the people haven't played for so many years, what can introduce them back into the game. So we found out that a new plot is actually a good uh, re-entry uh, for our LAPS users to come back to the platform, and there's a way for them to get familiarized with the old characters, the villains, the heroes that they've once uh, enjoyed uh, when, during their childhood. So launching a new plot has been one of the biggest kind of initiative uh, during this new leadership. And that has led to uh, a surge in our users coming back. And another strategy that we, that we use a lot is actually how we can work very closely with a community. So as, as you have seen, like everyone around you played Neopets in the past, and then around like 1% of them still played over the years. So these are the core users that really, really cared about Neopets over the years, even though there's no update, even though there's like bugs everywhere, even though like Flash just continued, but there's a core group of community that played Neopets all, all this time. And that's the main reason why Neopets is still alive. So one thing we did is building and reviving Neopets together with the community. So there's a couple of initiatives that we've done. One, first of all, is a, a community ambassador program that we've launched last year. So we actually recruited uh, 10 ambassadors from the, from the community. 
And when we did, when we designed the community ambassador program, we actually uh, got a lot of advice from other projects and other teams on how to do it. And we received actually over 500 applications uh, to become ambassadors. And then we designed a program where we recruited ambassadors from different parts of the community. For example, uh, some, of the, uh, some of the community members who run our Reddit, some of the community members who run our Discord, but also uh, community members who really play our games in different aspects. For example, some ambassadors care really much about the battle dome aspect. Uh, some people care about the pet caring. So we tried to have a very diverse uh, community ambassador program so that they can give us all the advices and help us collect a lot of feedback uh, from the community. And this community I'm talking about are kind of like the 300,000 uh, players who still play Neopets today. And the community ambassadors help us really to collect these information and help us make decisions on, okay, what should we fix next? Because to be honest, our to-do list of a number of bugs or a number of things that we can fix with the classic game itself, it's going to take us years to do every one of them. But how we prioritize and focus is actually a big part of this community-led initiative. So every month, we actually have meetings with our community ambassadors, and then we talk about the upcoming events, plots, and, uh, and, and features that we're about to launch. And at the very early stage of the design process, they would actually give us feedback, what the community cares about, and they would also help us kind of like do some research here and there and kind of like provide their feedback. And it's actually a great kind of like two-way traffic where we're building features based on what the community wants and we're receiving feedback very early on at the design stage instead of us launching a new feature and then see how the community reacts and then we change. And we find that a lot more efficient and a lot more productive when we kind of uh, get the community involved at the larger scale at the very early on stage. This, this is a, it's kind of like a hard learned process because like at the earlier start of the community ambassador program, we did the traditional way around. We kind of have a prototype, a new feature, and then how we're going to launch an event. And then we kind of like let them know. And then based on the feedback we collected, we try to change and fine tune it. But as with all product goes, once the design is, has been done, it's really hard to change that much. And you're only able to change like maybe like 10% of it. And then by the time product goes out, the ambassadors are not happy because like, oh, I gave you so much feedback and so many advices, but only like 10% of it got incorporated into the final product or the final update. So, and then what we've changed with that program is to, okay, whatever we're gonna do, we're gonna give them like two, three months in advance notice. And then so it was kind of like early on in the, in the, in the design process, we get them involved. And then we get the feedback kind of in the next meeting and then we incorporate all those changes. And then we realize that we're able to at least take in maybe like 30 to 50% of their advices or their comments. And of course, like we still have to maintain the integrity of our product team and we can't take 100% of what they say, right? Cause like we're still building on what we believe on. But that actually helps to get the team and the community a lot closer. And whenever there's a product launch or there's a feature launch, these ambassadors, ambass, ambassadors also become part of uh, kind of like the team to evangelize the product and really help defend us uh, when it comes to kind of like the, 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 top, the more toxic side of the community, which I'm sure a lot of us do understand that sometimes in the online space is not is always the loud voice that gets heard. But with the community ambassador program, we actually get to filter a lot of these uh, noises and really get to what uh, our community cares about. So, but there's still a lot of challenges that we're facing with the classic game revival. So it's, it's not all rosy. I mean, Neopets is a big IP, uh, but if we're comparing to our historical peak in the early 2000s, we only have around 1% of our users that are still playing. Uh, we have a good like 300K MAU, but is that enough? And a lot of our returning users are coming back because of nostalgia. They want to say hi to their childhood. They want to revisit their old pets. But are they going to stick around with this old game, a 25-year-old game that hasn't innovated much? And for sure, uh, being such, a, such an IP and game is actually really hard for us to attract new players. Like how can we attract Gen Zs and like Gen Alphas to really know about uh, our IP? So this actually leads to our second pillar of the strategy is the IP business. So Neopets is, is a very well-loved brand. Uh, and then 
how we can leverage the licensing and IP business to really help us expand this ecosystem to a new generation of users and also help us to reach the 99% of the users that might not ever come back to play our game. So we have a huge brand awareness, but how can we monetize it or how can we build a better business out of it? And rebuilding the licensing and merch program is actually one of our kind of like top priority because with the classic game on the left-hand side, we're probably there's going to be a ceiling. It's, gonna, it's always going to just reach maybe like up to 5% of all players, all users who play Neopets and love Neopets in the past. But the licensing and IP business, is what can extend Neopets into the hopefully next 25 years to come? And as we think about it, is like if you can get a licensing partner to get our products out on the market, it's also free marketing, and also you can leverage their distribution network to reach our old audiences and new audiences without us ha having to spend the marketing dollars. And then once people see the Neopets IP, it will bring back a lot of nostalgia, and that would also contribute to potential revenue streams for us. But our challenge is we have the brand awareness, but we don't have the brand relevance anymore. So like Neopets now, I mean, okay, so some of these stats are now. So we still have over 400 million monthly page views contributed by the 300K active users. Uh, but historically, we have a 150 million registered user base. So that's kind of the prize asset that we want to target. And those are the users that we want to attract back to the Neopets ecosystem. And up to, the, up to this day, we're still a top 20 US video game website. So why do I talk about these big numbers? Because that's what license, licensing partners cares about. When you talk about a potential licensee, they want big numbers. They want to believe in the revival of Neopets and they want to make the investment so that they can help us and revive this IP. And the second one is, like we've been able to generate a, a lot of organic PR coverage. Uh, so this is more kind of like guerrilla tactics. I mean, we don't have the budget to do a lot of user acquisition, uh, like performance marketing. Those are really expensive. So we've been able to leverage our community to get a lot of our, this revival stories to get out and driving a lot of returning users to come back. And just putting things into perspective, like these is kind of like the Google search interests based in Australia. So Neopets, you can see back then, is actually as popular as Roblox is today. And that's a crazy fact that whenever I tell this to the licensees, they don't believe it. But once they see the stats, it's like, oh my god, there's a huge potential for Neopets in the, in the licensing business. And even with like the really popular Bluey, it's still kind of like half of what Neopets used to be. So that also opens a lot of doors for us. Can we get into kind of like animation? Can we get into entertainment? I think a lot of these are possibilities, but only if we can get this whole revival going on, and, but the brand awareness is definitely there. So I think for, for the licensing business to work, it's a lot about storytelling. And the good thing about Neopets is that we have a very diverse world views. I think for people who played, I'm sure you remember that there's more than like 18 lands for it to explore, although it's a click-based game, but you can click into like different maps and it actually represents kind of like different parts of the world, different culture, different species, and different adventures that you can get on. There's also more than 50 Neopets species that you can choose from. But the downside is that everyone might not immediately recognize Neopets because there's more than 50 of them. And then because of the customization that you can do, the permutation is limitless. But that also comes with a, a problem for our licensees. So if I were to make a plush or if I were to make a toy, who should I choose? There's like so many of them. Like unlike Pokemon, everyone chooses Pikachu or like unlike like Super Mario Brothers, they kind of like you have like the, the, the hero species. But for Neopets, there's like so many of them. Like my personal favorite is Shoru. But I'm sure if I ask around the, the room, probably like it's more than just the ones I show here. So but that's also a problem for us. Like who are our hero characters? What do we need to focus on to make sure the licensing business would work out for us? So one of the challenges we face is that, and then we actually need to make hard choices to decide and 
And as you can probably point out why I have these Neopets out here on the slide is because these are probably the ones that we're going to focus on and building to become kind of like a focus for our IP and licensing business. But if your favorite Neopets is not shown on the slide, feel free to let me know, talk to us, talk to the community ambassadors. We, we can still make some changes here and there. But to be honest, even putting just 10 or 11 up here, it was a very difficult decision. We might need to further narrow down to three to five for kind of like launches. Uh, because rebuilding the licensing program, like our licensing partners, they don't want to invest into 10 new toy lines. It's like, oh, let's try with one, maybe try with two. If we get to three or four, it's already kind of like, because like, even if like, there's so many Pokemons out there, but if you see in the product space, there's probably only five of them that ever mix it onto the shelves. And that's probably what's going to happen with Neopets as well. But that's kind of the reality of licensing business and the merch business. And then on top of that, we have a lot of uh, hero characters. There are famous fairies, there are the heroes, and there's also the villains. But a good part about that is because of all these like characters, Neopets is not just about the pets. It's actually also the humanoid version of characters that we can build, and that's what the plot is kind of like uh, threading everything together. Because all these heroes and villains, at the end of the day, it's what uh, drives the story. And then the Neopets itself is more the virtual companionship. And all these together, it really helps us to really build a very vibrant licensing program. So these are some of our past partners and, partner, uh, and new partners that we're working with. Uh, to be honest, restarting this whole licensing and merch business, it's pretty tough uh, at the very least. But there are some good progress that we're making. For example, we launched a brand new trading card game this year with Upper Deck. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's only launched in Canada and US, and I think there are certain stores that are carrying it in Australia. Uh, but kind of like a lot of our licensing partners, they believe in us, but they want to do like smaller launches in batches to make sure that we kind of prove the demand. And an interesting part about licensing program is that people are less willing to take risks because uh, you, normally you only get one shot to get your product on the shelves. If you get on too early and it doesn't sell well, you probably never get it, gonna get, Walmart will never talk to you again, Target will never talk to you again. So another program that we're doing ourselves is actually try to prove the demand to our licensees, is doing a direct to cons customer kind of like a uh, type of merch, merch program. So launching our own eShop is actually a big program that we're doing ourselves and just a marketing plug, we did launch it, so feel free. It's global shipping, uh, feel free to check it out. And that's one way for us to prove to our licensees that our product has demand. And, and I think with social media these days, that's kind of a great way for new brands and new IPs, even for a game, to really sell products and also generating extra income for your game and for your business. And then while you're building up your social media presence and building your fan followership, I mean, there's a lot of print on demand solutions out there. And I think that's a good way for smaller IPs or brands to start thinking about this licensing model and the merch model. But the biggest key challenges that we're facing, even for Neopets, is, well, we have the great brand awareness. We used to be as popular as Roblox, but we don't have the relevance anymore. And then there's no track record of our licensing or merch kind of like sales data in the past 10 years. When Walmart asks for it, we have nothing to provide. Or when a licensee is interested in us, they can only kind of like bet on us based on faith and based on their own love for Neopets. And lastly, we only have a 25-year-old game that used to be very popular, but we don't have any new content. Apart from the new plot that we have, that's kind of it. Like comparing to Bluey, that was like new animation series all the time. YouTube is always dominated by them. Uh, compared to Roblox, there are many, many new games built on Roblox on a daily basis. So how do we compete? So that actually leads to our third pillar, is what Neopets 2.0 is about. So with this great IP, great brand awareness, we still need new content. And new game experiences help us capture new players. But the challenge is also with us here is, what game should we build? What experiences should we focus on? And how do we make sure that Gen Zs and Gen Alphas would care about Neopets 2.0? So that's also a challenging question for us too. Like, uh, like the Neopets classic game is still a cash cow to us. But how much should we invest into Neopets 2.0 and make sure that uh, they understand 
uh, the, the core aspect of Neopets and make them interested to play. And I'm sure a lot of people also face this challenge as game developers. Like, how do you get new audiences to play your game with performance marketing becoming so expensive? And what are the ways that we can reach kind of like new audiences? So for us, uh, the good thing about new game experiences is that uh, we have 150 million registered user base. So we've been focusing a lot more on guerrilla marketing and really reactivation campaigns. So at this stage, we're not trying to attract any Gen Zs or Gen Alphas. We're only targeting you guys, our millennial core user base. And to be honest, you probably start receiving emails if your email is still active about these, <laughs> <laughs> about the, the, the new experiences that we're building. But to be honest, these are the only low cost way nowadays to really get users to play a new game. But for us, luckily it's working out. We've been doing uh, beta tests and alpha tests with like batches of users. And the way that we know our users still love us is these reactivation campaigns, the email open rate is like close to 30% and click through rate is close to like three, 4%. So I think uh, those are definitely like, like something that we couldn't replicate if I were building a different game. I don't know what, what, how to do with that. But like, don't forget about the power of like more traditional kind of like guerrilla marketing tactics, like email marketing, people feel like it's something of the past, but, uh, but, but it could be a lot more effective than trying to spend money on Facebook and on Instagram or anywhere else because people who subscribe to your email, to your email database normally are the ones that care more about your brands. So those are kind of like uh, sleeves that uh, we still have like some tricks up our sleeves and reactivation campaigns. For those that haven't received our email, it's not because we're not sending it out. We just haven't gone to you yet, so don't worry. Uh, so yeah, uh, so and then, but jokes aside, uh, things that we're also exploring kind of like at the, at, at the junction of the three pillar strategy is that with our new game experiences, we're actually doing a lot more cross uh, brand collaboration with other IPs, like introducing other IPs into our game, but also introducing Neopets into their game is one way that we're doing uh, to help really cross pollinate uh, especially in the licensing business as well. Uh, if it's not game related, we still want to create a game in-game item for our licensees so that there's the offline to online experiences. Like when you buy a plush, you can scan the QR code and get an interesting in-game item. That's kind of ways for us to getting um, users back into the ecosystem. And especially for people who just want to buy merch, but they don't want to play our classic game, having some new game experiences like, uh, like a like a smaller side game that's available on mobile also helps to excite licensees about, oh, there's new content. I mean, I like personally, I don't think any of the, these smaller new games would be as big as Neopets back then, but licensees doesn't have to know. Like they just need to know that we have new content, we have new things coming out, and the, the story is always about there's enough updates about Neo, Neopets that this IP will continue to live as long as we could. And that's kind of the story that we need to sell. But of course, like how we can leverage licensees to get new users to come back. Like it's really hard to get non-Neopets player to back to the classic game. And even if we get them back to the classic game, they're probably gonna play for, I don't know, like five minutes and then they're gone. Is it worth acquiring users for the classic game? Probably not. But acquiring new users for kind of like these new game experiences is what kind of like what everyone here is doing as well is really about expanding the IP and the love for Neopets to a new generation of users. And one thing that we've, that's I guess we have the luxury of is, it's a very unique experience when, uh, and I'm not sure if there are any young parents here, but when you can play the same game with your kids, it's actually a very powerful and emotional um, kind of like story that you can tell. And not that many games out there can offer that. And especially when Neopets still have all the saved data, the same server that's been running for 25 years, every one of you can actually come back and say hi to your childhood, but maybe introduce your child to this IP that once is a big part of your memories. And I think that is the experience that we want to draw. And with the new game experiences, that's kind of what we're targeting. And I think a big part of knowing your own brand and knowing your own kind of like what your game represent we need to think about a strategy that makes sense for, for your own game. And for us, to be honest, we probably don't care much about Gen Z because we completely lost that already. But Gen Alpha is what, what we can win because of the young parents who played Neopets growing up. They won't go back and play the old game, 
But if I'm a parent to make a decision for my kids, I'll probably say, oh, Neopets, I've played it before. Maybe my kids should play it. And then Neopets has always been a safe environment, positive screen time, virtual companionship. It actually strikes all the right bells for how, how I should choose a game for, for kind of like your kids. So I think that's kind of what we feel like could differentiate Neopets and that's what we want to build. And to be honest, gameplay wise, it's a, it's a match three game, but it's like a less, less uh, it's kind of like one of the mini games that we used to have, but definitely a lot more vibrant. But there's so many match three games out there. If I were to do performance marketing on Facebook, I don't know, I'm not gonna win. I'm, I, like it's gonna be very, very expensive for us. But if we can go through the reactivation, reactivation campaign and get people who like to play match three games and play Neopets in the past to come back, that might be easier. Or for parents to choose a game for their kids, like knowing that Neopets is still around, that's also kind of something that we're betting on. But the challenges that we're facing is that for the core users, the 300K users who are still playing Neopets, the 25 year old game, the only thing they care about is Neopets.com. They don't care about anything else. So like our players are very passionate, but sometimes they can also be uh, very loud in, in the online space as well. <laughs> So whenever we talk about, okay, we're building new game experiences, we're trying to leverage new technology to uh, kind of like uh, build the Neopets future, the, the comment that I see the most, just focus on classic, fix the bugs, fix the game, fix the classic site. So that's what we get a lot. So even with the community ambassador program, to be honest, like all of them represent the classic game. None of them really helps us to think about the future. So there's a very fine balance between, okay, focusing on the core, because that's the cash cow, that's the majority of your business, and how we can kind of still build parts of what Neopets can rely on in the next 25 years. Because to be honest, like five years, 10 years down the road, when everyone grows up, will, 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 will all of you still play Neopets? Probably not, you're gonna graduate from the game. But we can also rely on the classic game because that's the core, we can kind of like see that once you have the emotional attachment with your Neopets, it could be a lifelong game, it could be a lifelong pet that you're taking care of, and that's the main reason why so many of our users are still playing, although only 1% of the historical peak, but that's good enough. Like, if we look at a lot of the success of uh, classic game revivals, it's always the classic game that's still the core asset, and we made, we've made a very uh, strategic decision that we're gonna keep classic the look and feel of classic Neopets.com as it is, because that's the heart of what we all care about and especially our existing user. But we will still have to foray into these new, new experiences uh, that we're building towards. But the key question comes to, what should we build? And how much do we invest in it? Because if we ask our community ambassadors or we ask our community, they would say, oh, just focus on fixing the game. Uh, and kind of like just bring back their favorite uh, side games in, within Neopets.com. Like a lot of people will say KeyQuest probably is number one. I'm not sure anyone here played KeyQuest back then? Okay, so like that's kind of like the most uh, talked about among the 300K uh, active user base, but it seems like the rest of the room actually never remember it. But if you only listen to the community ambassadors or if you only listen to the community, then we'll be pouring our resources to rebuild the, the KeyQuest game. But who would that serve? Like only two people in the room played KeyQuest and maybe, I'm not sure if they're still playing Neopets. So, but, so that's kind of the, the lesson learned is, although we need to listen to the community and we need to kind of like get their feedback, we also have to make very strategic decisions on how to think about kind of like your existing player base and then knowing that there's a limit to it. And then if we were to build Neopets to a, another 25 years, what do we need to invest into? So that's kind of, these are the key challenges that I've been facing on a, on a daily basis. Uh, the journey is still young. We still have a, kind of like a few more games that we're launching uh, in, the, in, the, in the coming months. Uh, but to be honest, the challenge is still on how many classic players would want to play these games. Okay, are we attracting our labs users to come back and how can this IP uh, live on uh, a lot longer? And to that, uh, I actually want to open up the floor a little bit earlier uh, because I know a lot of Neopets players and I actually want to interact with you more and also see uh, what, 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 what do you guys care about and how do I can get you guys to play Neopets again?
Because, uh, okay, one of the reasons, I, I can start first before you guys think of a question. So one of the reasons why I decided to come to uh, GCAP this year is that Australia has always been a top 10 market. Uh, although like North America, US and Canada represents like 70% of uh, our player base, but Australia is also is a kind of like a top five outside of uh, US and Canada. So I'm very excited to learn more about what you guys think, uh, how's the community here, and then it's always good to see a, such a vibrant gaming community uh, in this part of the world compared to where I'm based. I'm based in Hong Kong, and, and we, we used, Hong Kong is also a top five uh, Neopets market. Uh, but it's definitely not as vibrant as what I'm seeing in Melbourne and in Singapore. Yeah. Hi, I'm a really big fan of Neopets. I started playing in 1999, so it's got a special place in my heart. But I can't go back to the site because my account was actually deleted. But that's not what I'm asking. <laughs> 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 um, so I just wanted to ask, why do you think there is more growth, both fiscally and community-based, in creating a Neopets 2.0 versus um, focusing on the classic Neopets or the classic version as it is now? Because from kind of my involvement in the community and, and watching it you know, from both a business and community perspective over the past 25 years, I would say that um, you know, there's a lot of people out there who would be thrilled to pour all of their money into that if it was brought more to the forefront and expanded on in a more serious manner. So I'm just curious, like I understand like not putting all your eggs in one basket, but is there a reason why you feel like you need to diversify at this stage? No, that's a good question. To be honest, I we, we strongly believe that reviving the classic core is actually the most important step in this three pillar strategy. Is the most important and probably the first step that we're, we're taking now. And I would say like 60, 80, 60 to 80% of my effort is actually on this pillar itself. But I would say the need for building the second and third pillar is twofold. So the IP business is actually helping us to get a lot of our lapse users to come back. And when they come back, I hope the classic game is still their go-to platform. But if not, the Neopets 2.0 would be an alternative for them. So it's kind of like the three strategy reinforces each other because the IP and licensing business also helps us generate additional revenue. And that revenue could be poured back into the Imagining Classic, but also doing Neopets 2.0. If I don't do the second pillar strategy, I might be cutting my revenue by like 20, 30%. And that would be kind of like resources that could help us doing both one and three. And for number three, as I mentioned, is pretty vital for building number two. If I don't have any new content and only reimagining classic, uh, licensees won't buy that as much. Investors won't care as much. So that's kind of why we need all three pillars. But at the end of the day, the reimagining classic and keeping the look and feel of classic is actually the, the most important part. And we are seeing a lot of users coming back uh, revenues are growing and, and we're, we're still strongly betting on the first pillar. Uh, hello, hi. Um, oh, it popped out. I'm short, okay. So I'm one of the people that recently came back. I got the emails and they worked. I'm like, okay, I'll react to my account and I'll play Neopets again. Um, and so I'm very personally invested in Neopets being successful and really coming back. And uh, my question is it's half question, half suggestion. I speak as a video game marketing professional. So this is what I do for a living. Um, and I'm curious, with your new game experiences and your, your plans, um, have you considered creating things that appeal to like Twitch streamers, YouTubers, reasons for them to make content and videos and engage their audiences to get them back into Neopets? Well, first of all, thanks for coming back. And then uh, secondly, we do want to rely on that. Uh, so in our community, there are like streamers who actually approach us as like, oh, what can I stream? But what we realized is that streaming a 25 year old game doesn't really excite people who didn't play Neopets in the past. So whether it's like, can we create like a gaming contest with the old game uh, based on nostalgia, that's definitely things that we're exploring. But I think it's kind of like, if we don't have anything new, it's actually hard to get a lot of streamers to stream and create a campaign out of it. Uh, so I think that's kind of uh, what we struggle most in, okay, what content can we drive at? But if you have any great ideas, feel free to let me know. <laughs> and now we'll, 
like uh, we're happy to leverage that and 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 see what what other guerrilla marketing we can I, do. I have so many ideas I can give you. This is what I do for a living. So we'll chat later. I'll, I'm happy to give it to you for free. Awesome. One new pets at success. We're all yours. We're all yours through community. <laughs> Hello. Um, I also love new pets. Never left. Yay, go me. Um, I'm all <laughs> <laughs> ooh advent calendar. Um, I'm also a parent, and I'm really curious to see, was very excited to see this image, this key art that you have up there on the right, because it excited me to think that maybe there was going to be cozy games. And then I was super excited when I saw the key art for the fairy game. I was like, holy shit, fairies are coming back. This is the next thing. It's going to be cozy games. And then you showed a match three. And I, sorry guys, I know we're all many mobile professionals in here, but I've, I was there for the last years as well, and I've seen actually a few different iterations of the Neopets mobile games. And I have to say, I lost a lot of trust in this space that was created as a safe place, as a place before a lot of these kind of, um, I guess, dark patterns we might call them now. And when you mentioned about this idea that I could share my Neopets experience with my child, I thought, holy shit, yes, but I'm not going to do that with an IP that I've lost trust with. So I'm your audience. I'm your millennial parent that wants that, wants to share that with my child, but, but I don't want to see and introduce my child to like mobile games, especially with more and more things coming out about how like potentially damaging that can be to a young mind. So I just wanted to hear a little bit more along that strategy and sort of like give you my part feedback, part question as a fan and your target audience. <laughs> no, no, thanks for that. That's why I want to run a longer life section. So, so let me uh, rephrase. So I think Neopets 2.0 is actually going to be a, a, a more gen alpha friendly game. Like how we, how we double down on virtual companionship, how we can double down on like wellness, the emotional attachment that like your, your next generation can build with Neopets. So the match free mobile game is more like what we have now that's off the shelf. And it's not really, it's not, it's, okay. I can say this, it's fine. So, <laughs> so, so, the, so, so for example, the match free game is actually something that's in our library that we can refurbish and get out to market quickly. So it's more a business decision that we have a, at least a mobile game experiences that's out there, uh, but it's not really the Neopets 2.0 that we envision, but at least it can show that how 3D Neopets could be, how a modernized Neopets gaming experience environment could be. So it's more for that, but we're not trying to target your kids, not yet with this game, so don't worry. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I think it's more about like me as the millennial parent having inherent trust in this brand, and if that trust is broken, I'm not gonna make the decision to introduce it, and that's kind of like, anyway, it's just the feedback that I wanted to deliver. No, no problem. <laughs> well, you. we're only one year in. We're working hard to rebuild that trust, and at least we're talking now. <laughs> Uh, hi, um, I am also a digital marketing professional, and just first of all, are you hiring? Um, I, I think I can speak for everybody in here that there's a strong interest in uh, participating in this, either as a consumer or just as a fellow professional. Uh, unserious question, no, you don't have to answer that right now. Um, but I, I am very interested in your um, talking about targeting millennials because I have very fond memories of Neopets, and I did actually fire up a new account a couple of years ago. And it just didn't, it, it didn't re-engage me, not because it was different, but because I'm on my computer all day. I work now, I'm not a child, and uh, I don't want to be on my PC playing kind of an endless game um, for hours and hours after I have completed my nine to five computer job. And I see you have tablets and phones up there, uh, and maybe I'm just behind the times or fell through the cracks during the marketing campaigns for a mobile version, but I'm curious if you have plans of prioritizing a functional mobile version with the emulated Flash games where I can play Neopets comfortably and fully without being glued to my work desk. Yeah, so, so there are a few things that we're doing. So we're trying to make the game uh, more accessible. So making it less about the grindiness, less about you have to stick to your game for hours, but more maybe stripping out the companionship aspect of like interacting with your pet and then kind of like putting that on mobile. So currently the game, I think only 30% of the pages are mobile friendly, which is sad to say. We are converting more pages so that it's more mobile friendly going forward. 
uh, but we're also trying to make it less grindy so that you can play in between work maybe to relax a little bit and just want to get that emotional support that you need during a stressful work day so I think that's kind of things that we, we are introducing and make it easier to care for your pets but not having to get through the whole game uh, so that's kind of our strategy and back to your first question uh, if the growth trajectory continues we're definitely expanding our team uh, and we have been hiring a lot from the community because like people who grow up with Neopets and with that passion, it's much easier to jump right in and kind of like contribute. Uh, so feel free to continue to uh, stay close to our LinkedIn. Uh, we have a fully distributed team, 100% uh, remote. So we are basically hiring from wherever. So. Awesome, thanks. No problem. Uh, hi. Um, so I'm a programmer and I learned to code through the HTML guides on Neopets when I was a kid. Um, so, you know, I have a lot of attachment to it. Um, and like, I feel like some of the things I really liked on Neopets was like pimping out my shop and my profile page and all that sort of stuff. And like, I also saw you had like the comparison with Roblox as well, which is all, you know, you make your own game kind of thing. And I'm wondering like in your strategy, are you thinking of these like user created experiences because I know that was one of the big draws of Neopets for me. Yeah, so actually we're definitely open up in our second pillar, the IP business, we're actually opening up the IP to the community in a way that like anyone could become our licensee. So one of our licensing partner is uh, it's called Geekify. They're a relatively smaller kind of like uh, uh, a licensing partner, but what they did is like they, they created a tabletop game. They wanted to create a tabletop game and they actually started with a Kickstarter campaign. And it's, it's kind of unknown of in the IP industry to let your licensee run a Kickstarter campaign for their product. But at least because we're, we're, we're definitely a lot more agile and we do believe that the IP actually belongs to the community in a way that they should, they, like we could work together to revive it. And, and that's kind of what we're continuing to do. And, but in terms of turning it into like, oh, user generated content, like we have a kind of like pretty half broken website. It's really hard for us to support, okay, more user generated content in the way that you would probably experience in Roblox. That's probably something that we can't do yet. Uh, but we are definitely supporting kind of like the community to contribute content and more from an artistic uh, design direction, helping us create like maybe some NPNC items or creating kind of like plushes or help us design in that perspective. Uh, but in terms of new game experiences, it will be hard for now. Uh, but the goal is definitely to open up more and have a lot more user generated content. And with our community led growth strategy, actually most of our community sites or like Reddit, Discord, uh, Facebook groups are all run by our community and we have a community, we just started like a, an art program uh, for the community to contribute kind of like, uh, like using our IP and create art pieces and, and make, it, make it much easier for them to join our licensing program. And the trading card game, for example, that we launched with Upper Deck, they actually hired artists from our community and all of them kind of like got connected because of these uh, initiatives. So, so that's kind of our way of getting user generated content from the community. Yeah, cool. Thanks. Cool. I think uh, I just got the time. So I think we're great. Uh, I will stay behind for any more questions. If you guys have any, uh, any need of getting back to your account, saying hi to your childhood, <laughs> or you want to update your email so that we can reach you, feel free to come find me. Thank you. <laughs>